Hey, it's Zana. Welcome back to Consciously Create. And if you're new here, hi. I'm an independent music artist. I write, record and produce my own music. And I also film four series here on my YouTube. And this one is all about business and branding and marketing and so, so much more. So for this video, we're going to delve into a lovely little revelation that I've had for myself about my own path. And I thought I would share it with you because I feel like a lot of us do this. And that is that we get so scared, like too scared, to go after our dream career and our goals and everything because we feel like where we're at currently isn't good enough. And I'm going to use myself as an example of this because I oh, so... Like, it makes me feel uncomfortable even thinking about it. This is how much our belief system impacts us. Like, even just thinking about um, singing and vocal exercises gives me so much anxiety. And I've uncovered for myself that my belief below that is that I feel like where I'm at is not good enough. And where I'm at is so not good enough that I can't even bring myself to practice and try and improve it. And I think so many of us get caught up in this cycle and like um, self-sabotaging belief system is that we're so ashamed or uncomfortable or anxious or sad about the level that we're currently at with whatever it is that you want to improve upon, like whatever skill it is or anything to do with your life. For myself, it's singing and vocal exercises, but like we get so uncomfortable about where we're at currently that we then don't take any action towards improving it and changing it and bettering it. And this is something that I've been stuck in a loop with for so many years. And it's only recently that I've uncovered why. Because I was sitting there thinking to myself like, why do I hate doing vocal exercises when I absolutely love to sing? Like, if you just put any kind of song on, if I know the lyrics, I have to sing it. It feels illegal not to. <laughs> like, it feels weird to not sing along to a song if I know it because I just like you know when it just kind of takes over your body and it just sweeps you up and I don't know it just feels so good to me so I can't not sing along but then when it comes to doing vocal exercises I'm like hell to the no I don't want to do them and I literally have had so many breakdowns like so many um tears and sadness and crying come out just from singing some fucking scales. Like, it's, and it sounds so ridiculous when I talk about it like that, but I feel like so many of us do this because we're like scared to even face where we're currently at because we feel like where we're at is not good enough. And whether that's come from somebody else actually telling you that you're not good enough, or whether that's come from you telling yourself that you're not good enough, either way, we've taken on this belief and how can you improve upon it and become good enough if you don't practice, you know? Obviously you need to practice. It's the same with any skill, whether you're learning an instrument or something else. You have to start where you're at to be able to improve it. And I feel like a lot of the time we take on so much shame that we don't allow ourselves to then try and to then practice because it literally, like shame is the lowest emotion you can feel. So when you have something like that in your belief system that triggers that type of emotion, it can be crippling, like you literally can't move. And that's happened for me with so many different things, but especially with vocal exercises. So I feel like it's important to talk about it because maybe you're not even aware of the fact that it's shame that you're feeling or the fact that you have some kind of negative belief around whatever it is that you want to do. Because there's an aspect of me that is like so obsessed with music, I can't even stop thinking about it even when I'm taking a day off, you know? Like I'm so passionate about it and I love doing it and I love songwriting and creating beats and stuff. But then there's also another aspect of me that is absolutely terrified of it. <laughs> that just does not feel like she's good enough and just you know, doesn't want to practice at all because if I practice then I have to face that pain and that shame and that sadness and that's really uncomfortable. So I feel like it's almost a safety mechanism of a way to avoid our shame is to just avoid practicing altogether because then you don't have to face the emotion that comes up with it. So, huh. Even just saying that makes me feel like, oh. <laughs> because I forgot that that's actually the, um, 
like survival mechanism that I'm doing. I didn't even correlate it to that until right now. So now I know like, okay, when this um, fear-based belief, when these emotions come up and I wanna run in the opposite direction and not practice whatsoever, and I just wanna like distract myself and go do something else. Now I need to actually stop myself from running away and sit with that uncomfortable shame and sadness that's coming up because it's actually okay and safe to feel those emotions. And when you feel them, that's when they're able to release and that's when they're able to be heard you know, they just want to be heard. So the shame that I'm feeling just wants to be heard because it's a belief that I've carried for so many years. I don't even remember when that belief happened. You know, I don't know when I took it on, but apparently I did because it exists. So I'm just gonna try and sit with it. And this is something that I do all of the time and it definitely helps. So I highly recommend just whenever the sadness, the shame, whatever it is comes up to actually allow it to take over your whole body, even though it feels absolutely horrible. It's not fun. Sometimes it's like unbearable and just, uh, but to actually allow it. And if you feel like you don't wanna allow it, and you resist that, then to sit with the fact that you're resisting it, you know, to sit with that resistance that's coming up and let it be what it is. Like, it's okay to resist it. It's okay to feel it. It's okay to be where you're at. Even that in itself, like, um, we're not wanting to practice, we're not wanting to develop our skills because we feel like we're not good enough where we're at. And it's the same with your emotions. Sometimes we don't want to sit with them. We don't want to be present with them because we don't feel like it's okay to be where we're at with our emotions. Like we don't feel like it's okay to actually sit with them and feel them, like they're wrong or bad for existing when they're not. And whatever emotion it is you're feeling is not wrong for being there and it's okay to actually sit with it. And however you feel about whatever goal it is that you have, it's okay to feel that way. Even if it's something negative, it's completely okay to feel that way. And it's not your fault for even having that belief. Like it's perfectly okay to be where you're at. And now you're aware of it, you're able to make the changes which are gradual, you know? And that starts with sitting with it the first time and then when it happens the second time you sit with it again. And then the third time you sit with it again. And you just keep going through that process of sitting with whatever emotion comes up when you're trying to move forwards. And in a year from now, when you've been doing that every single time, like imagine the progress that you will have made and how differently you'll feel about the thing that it is that you want to achieve. So I really hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for listening. Definitely check out the description box below for all links to my social media, my, oh, I just hit my keyboard, <laughs> my music and everything else about me. It's also my birthday week when I'm filming this. I'm not sure what week this is gonna go up, so it's probably been and gone, but I'm excited right now, so I'm just tell you. <laughs> and yeah, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.